고등학교 1학년 천재 이재영 제 5가 Our Earth, Our Future, Our Choice. Keystones in Nature. Welcome to Student Science Show today. We'll be discussing an important topic, keystone species. And our special guest is an expert on ecosystems and the environment, Dr. Walters. Welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. Walters, let's get right to the point. What exactly is a keystone species? Well, it's a species that has a huge effect on the ecosystem where it lives. What do you mean? Well, have you ever noticed the keystone on a stone arch? It is only one stone of many, but without it, the whole arch would fall. The keystone makes the whole arch stay strong, even though it is only one small stone. It's the same in an ecosystem. An animal might not be the biggest in size or number, but without it, the ecosystem will collapse. Oh, you mean that sometimes one stone or one species can be um, especially important? Exactly. Is this a new term? Actually, the term keystone species was first used by Dr. Robert Payne, a geology professor in 1969. He examined the food chains on Tatusi Island in the U.S. state of Washington. He observed that diversity decreased during periods when the number of predators decreased. In other words, when fewer predators hunted in the system, there were fewer other living things in the ecosystem too. Did he focus on one particular species? Yes, he saw that purple sea stars were very important because they hunt musils on Tatusi Island. The musils took over the, the area and left little room for other species. When the sea stars were present, however, the ecosystem where they lived remained properly balanced. Many species um, could live well together. This is why he called purple sea stars a keystone species. So, a keystone animal eats other animals, right? Yes, but not always. Not just the meat-eating animals, but also plant-eating animals can be keystone species. Elephants, for instance, play this role in the Serengeti plains of Tanzania. Elephants eat small trees on the plains because they are able to knock over the trees and pull the roots out. Elephants prevent the trees from growing big and taking over the area. Well, Dr. Walters, I don't get it. How does removing the trees help the ecosystem? Okay, here's what removing the trees does. It helps the grass grow freely and become food for animals such as antelopes and zebras. Small animals such as mice can also make their homes in the dry soil warmed by sunlight. In turn, predators such as lions and hyenas depend on all these animals for food. The ecosystem is balanced and able to maintain their species. In this situation, the elephants are key stone species because without them, the ecosystem would change. Are there keystone species all around the world? The term was first used in the U.S., and the elephants I mentioned live in Africa, but these species are everywhere. For instance, in Europe, rabbits are a keystone species. Rabbits? Yes, scientists have discovered that European rabbit, the European rabbit is a very important species, species in Southern Europe. How so? They keep the ecosystem balanced in many ways. First, they affect it by eating plants and spreading their seeds. This not only creates open spaces, but also helps 
maintain plant diversity? Do the rabbits also eat other animals to help maintain balance? Actually, in this case, it is the opposite. Many other animals in the system hunt the rabbits for food. In other words, rabbits help many other species survive. Then is there anything people can do to protect keystone species? Yes, there are many things, but the most important one is to avoid hunting them or disturbing the ecosystem significantly. Many elephants in Tanzania, for example, have disappeared because people have hunted them. We must also do much more research. This is as important as hunting, not hunting. We must identify the animals and plants that are keystone species so that we can better preserve them in the future. Doing that work sounds very interesting and rewarding. Yes, but it's not easy. And I think this poses a great challenge for um, today's teens. I'm sure you've been a great inspiration to our listeners. Thank you for being on our show, Dr. Walters. You're welcome. And feel free to email me with more questions.